feel about the Doctor Who diary, Simon? Do you think he'd be, I, th I think <laughs> as present and correct as the Brigadier is, I don't think he'd be able to resist a thumb through that tome either, would he? What do you think? These links are getting worse, aren't they? These links are getting worse. Let's, yes. <laughs> let's head over to, to the snug and, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, hand over to Simon Horton with this week's Doctor Who diary. <laughs> What yeah, have you got for us this week, mate? <laughs> we, we, we're looking back at, we, well, there were 16 new episodes uh, screened this week in years Sorry. gone by, back through through the decade, 16 new episodes. Uh, actually, it was very popular this time of year. It was quite popular for, for New Who. Um, five episodes from New Who, Bad Wolf, The Satan Pit, Forest of the Dead, The Lodger, Empress of Mars, all these were shown in years gone by this week. But, but we're going right, right, much further back than that to begin with. 55 years, in fact to 1967 for the Evil of the Daleks episode four. Now, ah. what is really interesting about this one is actually Evil of the Daleks has a double celebration this week because not only in 1967 was episode four being screened, but the following year in 1968 began the repeat of the Evil of the Daleks with episode <laughs> one. So actually, it's a literally a double celebration for Eve of the Daleks this week. It's original premiere transmission and the repeat of the entire story. And what's good about this is this is the very, very, very first repeat ever of Doctor Who of an entire story. They had screened um, episode one of An Unearthly Child <laughs> a, a week later after the first episode of Screen. But this is the first time viewers ever, ever got to see a complete Doctor Who story repeated. Um, and they and embedded it oh, into the actual continuity of the show, though, didn't oh, they? Because it was so out of the ordinary. Absolutely, because it was so unusual. Repeats didn't happen. Can you imagine a time, folks, before repeats actually happened? But they didn't happen very often. And they they, they showed um, the whole seven episodes of Evil of the Daleks purely to fill the gaps between season five and season six. And you're right, Dan, as you can see from these photos, they literally tied it into the continuity. So, so Zoe... Uh, played by Wendy Padbury, was the new companion that had just arrived at the end of the previous story, The Wheel in Space, that ended Series 5. And so to bring her in, the Doctor said, I'll tell you what I'll do, Zoe. I'm going to show you, what you what's in store for you. And he puts on this little headset that he <laughs> up from the TARDIS uh, behind a round or pops it on. Um, and apparently it's a telepathic projector that shows Zoe the events of the Evil of the Daleks and the viewers. And of course, for the viewers at the time, this would have been really quite exciting because it would have been the first time, as I say, this had ever happened. The following week, the repeat of the Evil of the Daleks began and they got to see the whole seven episodes. And then straight after that, Series 6 started. So it was, you know, it was a fantastic way to, to plug the gap. It's um, interesting that in the Radio Times listing that we're, we're looking at now, that they've They've denoted there in a little in a little box that it is a repeat broadcast, and you do wonder because obviously it became a bit of a standing joke with the BBC, didn't it, JT? Mm -hmm. You know, eventually they would they would get bashed, wouldn't they, for the amount of repeats that they did show? But there was a time when they were quite rare, wasn't there? Because obviously there was the, the pickup of the TV license in Great Britain, particularly uh, obviously during the fifties. You know, with people still there was still rationing in Great Britain until the yeah early to mid fifties, wasn't there? And so people just didn't have the money to necessarily throw at a TV license, and they were gearing up to introduce colour in a couple of years' time. So they were very hesitant to repeat things at all, weren't they? Well, one of the reasons, as we as Doctor Who fans know, is that videotape was very, very expensive. So they would reuse it <laughs> um, or get rid of it, as we know. It's a, to make it was not the BBC's policy to to repeat things ever. And, um, and as we know as well, Doctor Who, as it got bigger and bigger and bigger, the BBC eventually had a policy of you can't repeat anything that was out of Doctor, which was the BBC phrase. You know, you had to have the, the current incumbent uh, if there were any repeats. But it just wasn't, the, it wasn't done. You, you know, you moved on, you moved forward, you know, and, uh, you know, it's admirable because now, of course, we've got channels that are just revolving around episodes uh, of various classic BBC TV shows. And they must Entire really feel... Platforms. Yeah, they must through. really feel the, the, that whole thing about junking a lot of Doctor Who because they would make a fortune and people would watch all these sorts of things, you know. So, but it wasn't the done thing. That's that's the way it was. Can you believe, Scott, that we had to, <laughs> that repeats of this show in its own home country were very few and far between, probably up until about until 
until yeah, the advent of cable and, and satellite yeah. TV until the nineties. Because you got repeats of it all the time, didn't you? If you if you all had the, the right time. Channel. All the time, uh, I, even like the local channels, like because I grew up near Cleveland, and uh, the local channels were always showing all the old television shows. And an example of that is when I was growing up, I I started watching the television show Mash when it was at the end of its run, about say maybe the ninth season. And mm -hmm. for some reason, I didn't at that time. I mean, I was only about seven years old, so I didn't understand how come the shows on the afternoon that were on five days a week on the local channel were showing ones with Henry Blake from like seasons one, two, and three, and then I'm seeing Colonel Potter once a week in the evening on CBS. And I'm going, what the hell is going on here? I don't understand because mm -hmm. you know I, I didn't know. Uh, That's a good I, point, I, I, actually, because I suppose in a show that changes its changes its lead every three or four years, Simon. That's probably a reason why some of those stories were seen as. It's just old hat too, isn't it? And, and to repeat out of Doctor might have been strange. Peter Harrington asks here, was it an option of one repeat in actors' contracts? I don't, no. know, what, I don't know what was in the contracts at that particular yep. time. I must be perfectly honest. I, because because repeats just didn't happen. Um, you know, uh, yeah, as, as Guy Granville says, it was unheard of when an earthly child was repeated. And the only reason the first episode was repeated the following week was simply because there'd been a breakdown in the transmitter um, in one of the regions for the BBC and because the BBC were launching this brand new series they wanted to make sure it had maximum uh, impact and so they repeated the following week before episode two but yeah they were just unheard of and so I'm not even sure that anything would have been in contracts to do with repeats because no. they just didn't happen. Yeah, I, oh, I, yeah. Original television contracts with the BBC were very much based on theatre and uh, oh, one one performance type oh, thing. Oh. And don't forget that some of the BBC output in the uh, early days was live. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor Who was never live, although it was shot for live, pretty much. It came close, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> but, but yeah, the, 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 it was um, the, the, a lot of the stuff was live, and so it was never ever going oh, to be repeated again. And that, of course, is why it doesn't even exist at all because it was never even recorded. You know, mm. stuff is out there in the in the ether somewhere that, that never ever got recorded. It's it's yeah. crazy to think about now. But but um, you I still... can't help but imagine Simon what uh, what Patrick Troughton said when uh, they presented him with that headpiece there too <laughs> that was what he was going to have to wear i'm, I'm sure he saw worse in his time <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is quite odd to think this is that, 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 that you're looking at a shakespearean actor there sitting with a, <laughs> <laughs> a face, on his head, and a large button <laughs> in the middle. you think he was on the phone to his agents almost immediately what else have we got in the diary well, say, before, very very finally before we move on from even the daleks because we just oh, okay. about Eep the meat coming straight from comic onto yes. uh, on TV. Interestingly, even of the Daleks is the very, very, very first time this ever happens because it's the first time we see the Emperor Dalek, who had previously been appearing in comic strip form for several mm. years until that point. Mm. So this is the first time we see the transition from comic to uh, to telly. Anyway, moving on, we move on a few years. Forty-eight years ago, you would have been sitting down this week. 48 years ago in 1974 to watch, yay, Planet of the Spiders, um, which I fondly remember this actually going out really? on air at the time. I've got very, very fond memories of watching uh, Planet of the Spiders. A um, few firsts and lasts with Planet of the Spiders. Of course, it's the very last Pertwee story, the last time we see the Third Doctor. It's also the last time we ever see uh, Yates, as played by Richard Franklin. Um, oh, yeah. It's the first time that we get to hear the word regeneration. This is the first time that they use the term regeneration for when the Third Doctor transforms into the Fourth Doctor. That's we um, It's also... Um, interestingly it's the first time it's actually the only time it's the first and last time ever that the same person to write the story directed it um, it was written by barry letts with robert sloman um, oh so uh, so is robert sloman did did robert sloman actually exist or was it a no, sloman, I've always been... yeah yeah no robert sloman did exist and he did write stuff and so the story is credited okay. actually to robert sloman but that's simply because barry letts could not be credited on a bbc production as writer and director and he was directing this one because it was john perkley's swan song the producer yeah. and was going to direct it so he couldn't have his name on as a writer as well but robert sloman really really did um did exist um, and and uh, but it was all all this was from the imagination of Barry Letts, who saw this story <laughs> apparently as a 
Buddhist parable it, because it has <laughs> to do with the doctor must become a new man by destroying his ego or something that <laughs> was, was a journey to marry let's but it's a cracking story and i still love planet of the spiders it's i haven't seen three, it for a while but yeah it is a, tribes of it. But episode an experience six, we would have been watching this week 48 years ago we would have been watching the final episode the very last time we saw john pertwee in the regular role as he regenerated do you remember this jt with very fond memories um and it, it actually scared me because i didn't like the spiders i was four and i didn't like the spiders and of course that year at the blackpool exhibition which opened uh, around about that time they had the spiders and they scared the yeah. hell out of me but also i remember being very confused about the ending um when the whole changeover happened and i have very fond memories of uh sitting down at the at the the, the yeah. breakfast table in the in the kitchen with my dad and him explaining to me there have been three other uh, two other doctors <laughs> between this one and there's another one coming and being fascinated by his memories of an earthly child sure. and the yetis and all, i remember very having a conversation story. like that with a family member too a, f yeah. a few years later not to rub in my relative youth that, well yeah. it's why planet of the spiders is special for me because I've, I've got all those memories about oh what, what's going on here who's this fellow who's this fellow with the black hair coming here <laughs> and, I, and i remember crying i remember as a six-year-old watching this crying crying broken heart oh. Because I thought, I thought that the, the, the doctor had died. I just didn't, I like you, JT, I didn't understand it. So yeah. I just, he, he died. I thought that was the end of Doctor Who. And I just cried and cried and cried. Aww. Who's yeah, this new guy? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, who's this new guy? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Peter I don't know. Yeah. I well, don't know. It's, <laughs> at that point, Scott, as well, Pertwee, of course, had been in the role for five years. And a lot of us yeah. were growing up with Pertwee. I mean, you know, I have fond memories of, of Joe Grant as a very little boy, um, and then suddenly everything changes, and and that's for me when when it comes back in Robot, that's where I become a real fan. Whoosh, you know, it's an amazing time. Well, when I was introduced to Doctor Who, it was on PBS here, so of course yeah. we didn't get to see it. Uh, uh, you know, new episodes all the time, you know, yeah. like you guys did. And I remember watching through Tom, the Tom Baker episodes two or three times. And then the next thing you know, they're like, oh, hey, we've got all new episodes of Doctor Who. And yeah. it's got the next Doctor. And then all of a sudden he regenerates. And because I, I didn't understand what was happening. You see this blonde guy at the at the end of, uh, was it Ca Castro, <laughs> Castro Valva? And I'm like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not Castro Valva, um, Legopolis. And I'm, I'm like, well, who the heck is this guy? Yeah. And then we go all the way back to Robot. And then, so when they finally introduced the Peter Davison episodes, I was like, oh, I get it now. And it, mm -hmm. was, it just blew my mind. And then, of course, I fell in love with Peter Davison. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, what makes, it's one of the many, many reasons why Doctor Who is unique, because you can only do that in Doctor Who, where you change uh -huh. the lead. And I have yeah. to say, that comment that you've got on screen now, Jack, just fills my heart with joy. Now, this is and our the friend Jack Mayne, who says, I'm only 22, and John Pertwee is my favourite classic Doctor. Respect to you drawing Jack Rabbit and thank you for cheering me up enormously because I think it's wonderful. J John Pertwee, I like like um, JT, I grew up with John Pertwee um, yeah. and, and still adore the John Pertwee years. And so to see a 22-year-old whose favourite doc, classic doctor is John Pertwee, respect to It you. is magical, isn't it? It's wonderful. It's when you go, when you go to um, the conventions and stuff and you see the little mm -hmm. ones dressed up as Pertwee yeah. or, 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 or Tom or something. There's I mean, a it, lad it, it, it on is Twitter. Amazing who uh, was photographed, well, he shared a photograph of him with Colin Baker yesterday for Colin's birthday. I think his name, his surname's Berryman. A really cute kid of about seven or eight years old. And he's no. got the full Pertwee no. outfit on. He's got the Inverness ah. cape on, JT, yeah. and the frilly shirt. And he's doing the sort of, and he's even doing the sort of the Pertwee scowl, where he sort of cuts that line down the middle of his face. You know, when he looks like he's got a beak or something, and he holds that stare. Beautiful. And, and, this, and this lad, uh, it's it just wonderful. He, it's, I mean, it's cosplay, but the primary school kids doing cosplay with absolutely screen accurate <laughs> takes Amazing. on these costumes this, of actors that were on screen fifty years ago. It's beautiful. This just shows the the essential. This is this is the Britishness of Doctor Who. This is what you, when yeah. you're no disrespect, but if you are outside the United Kingdom, you just cannot understand. This show is not going anywhere. This is part of our culture. And when you're getting five and six and seven year olds finding it again whether it be on YouTube or whether it be on the channel or whether it be through old people like me giving them DVDs or whatever. It's it's just cemented. <laughs> They're going to grow up with it again. It's amazing. 
And, well, and, and no just, disrespect taken, absolutely. Uh, because here I am watching, like when I was growing up, I'm watching the $6 million man and things like that. And I thought that was just mind blowing TV to a five or six or a seven year old. And then the yeah. next, you know, I'm introduced to Doctor Who and I'm thinking, what was that junk that I was watching before? <laughs> yeah, and I was quite envious. And it was just like, I, you know, there I, I, I'm, I'm having, you know, British envy. I'm like, why wasn't I born there? Doctor, Doctor Who is truly, truly unique, and I and I actually feel sorry for people that don't get Doctor Who and don't enjoy it because I just think there are strange true. people out there who it's lost on them. I, I feel yeah, desperately sorry. How, how can that be? How can that be? Anyway, <laughs> so, so, we, so we're going from a Doctor to talk about now yes. the son of a Doctor because today, this very, very day, we are celebrating the birthday, the seventy-second birthday today of David Troughton, the great, great David Troughton, of course. So equally equally great patrick troughton um yeah david troughton born 19 love this guy yeah born 1950 in london this was this was patrick Troughton's first son david is patrick Troughton's first yep. son um and is uh as a result he's actually the first child of a doctor actor to appear in the show if you get what i'm saying Yes. Um, this is the first time the child of an actor who was playing the Doctor appeared in the show. And, and, and he actually appeared um, uh, uncredited in Enemy of the World to begin with in 1967 alongside his father, Patrick Troughton. Then he was seen as a private in the War Games, credited this time. I also, knew he was uh, in a form, and I couldn't remember which one it was. Yeah. And then <laughs> finally, of course, uh, he, he, he really came into his own as, as King Peladon in The Curse of Peladon and really, really suddenly became very, very memorable as an actor on television. And then coming right up to date or near as damn it, he plays Professor Hobbs in uh, in Midnight. Um, well, I was going to say alongside um, David Tennant and uh, Catherine Tate, but it's, it's, of course, only alongside David Tennant. Um, and of course, he's then gone on to do numerous Big Finish and BBC audio plays. Of course, he is a member of the RSC, but I think he probably kind of guessed that because he should be. Um, but he's also done loads of TV, Holby City, Casualty, Bergerac, Heidi High. He was in a very peculiar practice with um, with Peter Davison. He's been in everything, hasn't he? You'd recognise him. He's one of those acts as well that um, he plays. He, there's not a specific type of character that David Troughton plays. He's a character actor. It's yes, yes, yes. We've talked about this so many times on the show that the character actors are in decline. Um, David Trant is a character actor. Simple as yep. that. Absolutely. Here, here. He's incredible in Midnight, but then again, isn't everybody? Uh, when he, uh, Peladon in, in Curse of Peladon, a really memorable character in the show's right. history. Play. He plays it so beautifully. Mm. And obviously mm. he's recreating that character at the moment for Big Finish in this new range that they've, they're planning with the character. But um, yeah, I uh, I always enjoyed seeing seeing David in, in practically anything like uh, Very Peculiar Practice of Prime example. There's been other sitcoms and, and dramas over the years. Always a, a delight. I mean, it's partly, it's the same thing. It's the same fanboy, fanboy glee I get when I see Sean Pertwee in something. I get this sort of smug feeling of <laughs> <laughs> the Doctor's son when he used to be in like Harry Enfield's show. And it's, it's the same with this. And I remember seeing David Trent with Colin Baker because he's Colin Baker's best friend, isn't he? They, they shared uh, a yeah. flat when they were both yeah. at drama school, even yeah. though Colin's a little older. And they acted together in those um, The Stranger tapes back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. I bought all those two. Mm -hmm. And they played sort of. Well, someone had to. Yeah. Well, they played. They played sort of. Um, I think they flipped the relationships in that slightly. I think David. They uh -huh. were sort of antagonists and protagonists, depending on which story you're watching. It was well, very nicely done. The, the other thing that's that's very very interesting about David Troughton is that he nearly became the Doctor. I don't know whether really? you're aware of this. No, tell um, us more. Yeah. Back at, back, at, back in the 90s, Virgin Publishing were proposing a, a new line of, of novels, uh, new adventures, uh, and, and David Troughton was going to be the face of the Doctor, and, the, and they were going wow. to the Seventh Doctor regenerate into um, David Troughton. I had no but, idea about this. Yeah, yeah, so, 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 he, so he was going to be used as the face on these books in the 90s version publishing it didn't obviously it didn't come to pass but apparently supposedly it did get as far as a photo shoot 
um, before the BBC vetoed the idea. And so supposedly, potentially out there, there are photos of David Trent. This is not an April Fool, by the way. You might think this is April Fool. It's genuinely not. Um, <laughs> there, there, could, there could be photos out there of David Trout and dressed as a doctor because that was the intention, that he would become the new doctor. Because bear in mind, at this point, Doctor Who has gone from television. It only existed in the books. Um, and so this would have been the, the continuation of the seventh Doctor. Would have been, the eighth Doctor would have been David Trouser. So what year? What year do we suspect this was again? In the early 90s. Right. In the early 90s. Yeah. God. It you learn something there. new every day, Geek Rambles. See, I'm here learning too. We all learn something on this show all the time. God, I'm imagining that now. I've, I've often imagined what kind of Doctor both Sean Pertwee and David Troughton would make, and uh, Michael Troughton, we're finding out at the moment, but Michael Troughton's not been given the, I think he is developing the character of the second Doctor in his own way, but obviously he's still recreating something. I, I think that David Troughton, and, and, and when people talk about Sean Pertwee playing the third Doctor, that doesn't really interest me. I'd love to see what Sean Pertwee would do creating something new, and it's the same with David Troughton. I've got no doubt he'd have the chops chops yeah. to do that to find yeah. a doctor there i don't think you'd have to dig very deep under the surface there to to connect with that character and with david he's one just one of those actors yeah well didn't sean once say that he would never play his father's role yes I, I, he did he did say that yeah 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 but, but, yeah. but, but does that does that mean you wouldn't want to recreate the third doctor does that mean you wouldn't want to play the role of the fifteenth Doctor, for example, I don't. That know. would be brilliant. I would love oh, to see. Him. I, I would see him, and I'd love to see David Troughton as the Doctor I, I, again. I agree with you, Dan. He's got the acting chops to do it. I wonder who's got those photos, <laughs> and we well, could, you know, if we could get they them. Will appear. At some point, they will emerge. <laughs> I'll come out in DWM. I'm not. I'm not in any doubt. At some point. And some when point, they do, I don't know where they are because I, I remember hearing those rumors years ago, and I always put them down as being rumors. But if it's true and it actually oh, happened, right. Nigel will know where they are. It, it could be rumours, you know, if, if, if this is all sort of alleged, um, but, but there's, there's, you know, there seems to be really reasonably Some good evidence to. out there that the photo yeah. shoot took place. Because I know John had a lot to do with um, the guidance of the new adventures to an extent as well, and he wasn't happy about a lot of it, I believe, but there you mm. go. <clears throat> well, when those pictures appear, Simon, when they appear, we'll make sure that we uh, we get them and we uh, took them away in the Doctor Who diary there to be uh, to be discovered and gazed upon for years and decades afterwards and, tr and treasured, just like that picture that Nick Dello has uh, shared of Pertwee there at the plastics factory. I'm sure they'll turn up eventually. Thanks for putting all that together, as always, Simon. A pleasure to uh, to leaf through those pages every single time.